Hey guys, what's going on? Aaron Bennett here. So in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the best news for today. And then I'm gonna take a bird's eye view about risk management and profits and kind of what I'm doing right now in the markets. So the stories for today are the crypto market is obviously over 1 trillion bucks. We have a story about the former Federal Reserve governor is now on board with Bitcoin. And a story about an institutional investor executing one of the largest crypto trades in history on Coinbase. And remember, Coinbase is where Michael Saylor of MicroStrategy bought all of his now over $1 billion worth of Bitcoin. A story about the UBS wealth manager saying that large institutional buyers are quietly fueling the Bitcoin boom. And the last story looking at Max Kaiser's 2021 prediction for the price of Bitcoin, pretty darn exciting. Just a reminder, Webull extended their free stocks until the 15th. They're given two free stocks just to create an account and another two stocks up to 1600 bucks once you fund your account with $100 or more. So the first story, around 1% of all the money in the world is now held in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other cryptos. To me, that's amazing. 1% of all the money in the world is held in cryptos. So the next story about the former Federal Reserve governor being bullish on Bitcoin. He says, if Bitcoin never existed, gold would be rallying even more right now. But I guess if you are under four. Bitcoin is your new gold. He says that this process of seemingly summoning money out of thin air and the prospect of what that will eventually mean for the US dollar's long-term value ended up stimulating the crypto markets. So the next story, the hedge fund management firm One River Asset Management has emerged as a major player in the crypto space after executing one of the largest crypto asset trades in history on Coinbase. So the initial trades were completed over the course of five days and executed at different speeds to work through varying market conditions. They teamed up with Coinbase Institutional to complete the transaction without moving market prices. So similar to what you can do on Celsius Network, if you want to buy or sell $25,000 worth of sell token or more, you can actually just do a transaction off market through the OTC desk. So I assume it's something similar where institutions can buy and probably sell very large amounts of Bitcoin without driving the price up or down. So they purchased over 600 freaking million dollars worth of Bitcoin and Ethereum with plans to increase the company's holdings to $1 billion in early 2021. So what we're witnessing, guys, is a trend that is just going to continue where more and more corporations are going to be coming on board. We are getting more ways for your everyday person to invest into crypto for people who want to stay in retirement accounts, for people who want to invest in their 401k, for big insurance companies, for all sorts of different types of money. So Michael Saylor said that $250 trillion worth of money wants to find Bitcoin, and we're creating more and more on-ramps for that to happen. So speaking of that, a wealth manager is saying that the large institutional buyers are quietly fueling this Bitcoin boom. So a private wealth manager at the Swiss financial giant UBS says that there's a lot of interest and there has been a lot of interest for a significant amount of time. A lot of very wealthy individuals, even those who have made their money in a very traditional finance sources, take risk. So he mentioned the adoption in the form of Bloomberg Galaxy Index. Then you go to Fidelity being a custodian. And now you are at PayPal letting anybody buy and sell Bitcoin. So he says adoption is going up, price is going up, and the lack of available alternatives in the market in terms of being diversified fires like bonds have largely gone out the window because of their relative risk return. So as Alex Mashinsky talks about getting non-correlated assets. And the last story, looking at Max Kaiser's massive prediction for 2021. So two years ago, he made an accurate forecast that Bitcoin would end 2020 trading at around $28,000. The problem is when you click the link that's in his tweet, it doesn't actually show me. So I'm not quite sure if he actually made that prediction or not, but Max Kaiser is somebody very, very big in the crypto space. So in a new interview with Stansbury Research, Kaiser says he expects Bitcoin to surge nearly 550% 
from its current price of $34,000 before this year expires. He said, I'm going with $220,000 per Bitcoin as a 2021 target, and that would bring us up to $4 trillion market valuation, which I think is a good 2021 objective. We are going to catch up to gold. That would bring us up to not quite half gold's valuation, but getting close to gold's valuation. He said that one of my predictions will be that one of the major central banks in the world will collapse in 2021, they are highly leveraged. These banks are leveraged 50, 60, 70 to 1, and one of them is going to collapse in 2021, and that will start an avalanche. Out with fiat money and paper money, and the top beneficiary of that will be Bitcoin. That's one of the catalysts for Bitcoin's price appreciation in 2021. My thoughts on that is that I hope and also can project and see a more peaceful transition to a Bitcoin standard. But whether a bank goes down or not, I mean, who knows? He thinks there will be, and that'll drive the price of Bitcoin up. And Bitcoin is getting incredible amounts of press right now. Like Reuters Business, which is on Twitter, 2.2 million followers. Yesterday, this story came out. Bitcoin's emergence as digital gold could lift the price to $146,000. So Alex Mashinsky on the next AMA that he does every single Friday, he said he will be providing the prediction for 2022. I will be covering that like I always do either the day or the day after the AMA. But if you want to catch him in real time, you can go ahead and subscribe to their YouTube station and catch that AMA. So he was spot on for his 2020. 20 prediction, whether he can carry over that prediction to 2021, obviously nobody really knows, but I will be very curious to hear what he says. So one of the reasons this bull run is very different than the last bull run is this wealth manager on the previous story says, unlike a retail investor, so unlike you know, some random person off the street. The assumption there is that these aren't speculators, meaning these giant institutions are not speculators. They're not just trying to make a quick buck. These are long-term buy and holds that can create a solid floor for the currency. Even the Bitcoin that PayPal and Cash App are buying on a weekly basis, they're not going to just sell their Bitcoin to make a profit, right? They are buying for the long term, and a lot of these institutions are. So if the price of cryptos does a giant correction, it's not gonna be the institutional money just trying to make a quick buck. It's going to be the retail guys who, oh my God, I got a little bit scared, or like, wow, I made 20% of my money, or wow, I you know, doubled my money, and then they're gonna sell. That is what is gonna be driving this price down, if it does. All I know is that whether Bitcoin goes down to even $20,000, it will eventually come back up to 37 and it'll cross 40, cross 50, cross 100. So it's that type of conviction that I have about the crypto market. If you don't have that conviction, it's going to be very, very scary if Bitcoin drops into the $20,000 range again. It's going to be terrifying if Bitcoin drops to say $18,000 for you. For me, that would not be terrifying. It would be annoying to see the value of your portfolio go down so much, but it wouldn't be scary in that sense. So finishing the video talking a little bit about risk management. So if you are in a position right now where if the thought of a 40% correction would make you want to jump off a bridge and make you have so much anxiety that you just could not stomach a correction, then you may want to consider selling some of your crypto. And if you are sitting on some amazing gains from crypto, you kind of have to think about, will you need this money in the next one to two years? Or is this just long-term savings that you will not need to tap into or touch? You really have to think about, can you stomach a pullback? And will you be okay to see your portfolio cut in half temporarily? But on the other hand, it's like, if you sell now, will you be okay with yourself if Bitcoin does not do a huge retracement and jumps up to 50, 80, $100,000? So for me, I am not going to be taking any more profits right now. If it retraces, I'll just wait it out. I don't think I will need that money in crypto for my life right now. So I'll do my best not to sell if the price goes down. But at the end of the day, I know that Bitcoin is going to hit a quarter million dollars. Like I don't have any doubt, especially with what's happening right now with institutions and just all the money flowing in. So if you don't have that belief in it, then it'll be hard to see the price go down so much. But if you have that belief, it's not super difficult to stomach 
a retracement. All right, guys, so that is the video for today. Again, get your four free stocks. The four stocks end, I believe, on the 15th of this month. You're getting two just to sign up and another two when you transfer 100 bucks. If you're not following me on Twitter, and if you're on Twitter, go ahead and follow me there. Link is below in the description. Till next time, guys, talk with you soon. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.